The Elder Scrolls Call to Arms is a miniatures game based on the Elder Scrolls video game franchise by Bethesda Game Studios and is set in the same world of Skyrim, so it will be familiar to anyone who has played the video game before. The game comes in a sturdy A4 box and contains a quick start guide, a 100 page rulebook and a 40 page book of quests or scenarios. Also included are two A4 sheets of card counters, 13 custom dice, 5 hero cards, 13 follower and monster stat cards and more than 200 other cards used for spells, weapons, equipment and events. As you can see the game is full colour and the production quality is excellent with some lovely artwork used to illustrate the items on the cards and throughout the books. The 15 page quick start guide is a great idea, introducing players to the basics of the game and letting them start playing by page 11. The larger rulebook might be a bit intimidating for those new to skirmish war games, whilst this easy to follow tutorial lets them learn the basics and get playing straight away. It walks the new players through the basic system and ends with a scenario, Escape the Dungeon, to use as a playthrough. The main rulebook is well presented and illustrated with diagrams and examples of key rules such as movement and combat that makes them easy to follow. The game is played in two different ways. Battle mode pitches your hero and their followers against another player with his band of trusty warriors. In this mode the number of heroes and followers a player can have are limited by a point system to keep the games fair. In Delve mode you play a hero exploring a dungeon and recovering treasure. This mode can be played solo or with a group of players, each of whom plays a hero in cooperative play against undead monsters who are controlled by a clever AI system. Each hero has a hero card detailing their stamina, health, magic power and so on. That is also to identify what the hero is equipped with. Players place the weapon and armour cards next to the hero card to show what he is carrying and can also equip their hero with cards showing magic items and potions. This allows you to customise your hero, switching weapons and armour around for different games. The hero's followers are not so detailed, having a card that records all their stats and equipment in one place, but they are just a supporting cast after all. Your basic heroes can be wizards as well as warriors, gaining access to spell cards that allow them to blast their enemies with flames or heal their friends amongst other options. The basic gameplay will be familiar to anyone who has played these sorts of small scale skirmish game before. Players take it in turns to activate one of their miniatures who can then make two actions such as move, shoot, fight, hide and so on. When the player has completed his actions, his opponent then has the opportunity to activate one of his or her miniatures. The turn ends when all the miniatures have been activated. What makes this game different are the special dice rolled to successfully perform an action. First of these are a white dice numbered from 1 to 10, but with the additional critical hit and fail faces too. This dice is rolled to perform actions such as hiding, unlocking a treasure chest or fighting. It is usually rolled with one or two of the green dice, which have faces numbered minus one, minus two or minus three. These minuses are applied to your white dice roll and compared to the target score needed to succeed. If you score greater than the target number you succeed. If you are trying to shoot someone with a bow or hit them in melee, you now roll a number of the remaining coloured dice to wound. Depending on your skill and the weapon being you are using, you will roll 1, 2 or 3 of the different colours, with yellow dice being the least effective through red to the more deadly black dice. If you are wielding a two handed weapon for example, you roll a red dice and you can roll additional dice by using special abilities or magic. The person being hit rolls a dice for the colour of dictated by his armour to reduce the damage caused which is usually a yellow dice for monsters. Whilst heroes have a number of wounds, most monsters can receive only one point of damage before being removed, allowing your hero to take on multiple opponents as heroes should. The rest of the rulebook covers special abilities, magic items and spells, and has a useful quick reference chart at the end. The rules are clearly written and the rulebook is well laid out, making it easy to find the sections you need. 
However, there is a lot to remember in every round, with special abilities, magical items, recovered stamina and magic points, as well as keeping track of who has activated. It may take a few games before players master the intricacies of the Call to Arms system. The third book features scenarios, ranging from dungeon delves, raids and sneak attacks, to stand-up battles, as well as a system for creating your own quest. The authors have worked hard to create what they refer to as a story-driven narrative, rather than just being a straightforward fight between one group and another. Event cards are used to introduce random events into the game, whilst each player has an additional objective to achieve as well as those listed for the scenario. A further fun feature is the possibility of monsters appearing, either as a result of an event or as part of the scenario. The Monsters card has a table of possible reactions that are decided by a dice roll, making it retreat, attack or take cover. This is a neat little system that harks back to the Elder Scrolls computer game routes, but it allows solo play and also makes monsters behave a little more realistically than just attacking every time. Overall, the game is not a quick one to pick up and play. There are a lot of rules to remember and there are quite a lot of markers and counters going on as stamina is used and regained and magic points are played. However, the designers have clearly gone to a lot of trouble to get this system right, and I think it will be rewarding to those who stick with it. There are lots of guides on how to play the game online, and there's plenty of support from the Elder Scrolls website, which should iron out any problems. If you're looking for a small-scale fantasy skirmish game with a high role-playing aspect, look no further. This video has been brought to you by WI Prime. Wargames Illustrated Magazine's online members club. View more videos or find out more about WI Prime by following these links.